How are we doing? Welcome to Agent Voice. It is Karan Stokes, and I am excited again to be back with everybody. Hope you are having an incredible week. Um, you know, this is an interesting week, I think, for everybody, because we've got half of the uh, United States that is starting to open up and, uh, and slowly eased back to things. Um, there's many parts of the country, I was on a call yesterday, um, and many parts of the world that are back and open. Uh, Israel's back and resuming business and, and the world starting to move along. And I think um, there were some cool things this week that we talked about through the Remax network that were really relevant. But I want to talk specifically about um, something that came from Adam Contos on his mind, body and business. He talks specifically about perseverance and what that means. And there's a, a key statement he made, and that is making the choice um, to do something, to, to, to continue to persevere through a process. And right now, I think for all of us, it's pretty cool that we're starting to see things return to normal. There's a little excitement, I think, that's building behind that. But for so many weeks, it's been about time management, how we're allocating resources and, and what we're planning to do. And Adam made a great point, and that is shifting from time management to choice management and moving to a place where you're engaging uh, in, in, in making very definitive decisions on the things you're choosing to do to change the trajectory of your business. And for many of us, changing the trajectory of our lives to be able to take uh, these opportunities. So this week, I'm excited because we're going to spend some time talking about what those choices look like. Now, before we get started, I want to make sure we do our, our housekeeping for the week. Um, on the right hand side, the chat box is up. Please use the chat functionality to uh, say hello, give people shout outs, let us know where you're, uh, you're tuning in from. If you're going to ask a question or if you want to contribute uh, to the conversation as far as a question, make sure you hit the Q&A button below. And on that Q&A button, you can type your question in and uh, we can field it as we get, uh, we get going to it. So I want to also do what we always do, and that is to thank some of the people that are at the regional headquarters. Um, I'll, I'll be honest with you, they don't know when I'm going to give them a shout out, but I think it's really important that we recognize the people that are behind the scenes, um, that are helping make this organization continue to run so that they can serve us through this time. So I want to give a, a couple shout outs to uh, Roy Schwalm in finance um, for all the things that they're doing remote to make sure that this organization is, is uh, continuing to run smoothly. Um, ben Suffitt and Dan Troop in uh, IT. Um, again, what would we be doing now without technology to connect us and to have as a, as a resource for, for us in our businesses? Um, and then also I want to give a shout out to uh, Tammy Peterson in HR. Um, wonderful person, but more importantly, you ever scratch your head when you're working with people from Remax International and go, how did they find so many incredible people dedicated to this brand? Well, Tammy's an HR and she's a big part of that process from a recruiting standpoint um, and, and, and integrating people into the Remax family and getting them going. So wanted to recognize those people. All right, now let's jump into it. I'm super excited to have our, our first guest. It's actually one of our overseas guests. We've had international guests because we've uh, talked with our folks from Canada, but I want to welcome uh, Marat Goldstein from Turkey, who is an amazing, amazing person. Um, not only is he a regional owner, but he is truly an innovator and implementer. He's been able to see things on the real estate landscape to serve brokers and agents. And he comes from that mindset as an agent at how he can improve not only his uh, his life and the business of his brokers and his agents, but also how they can implement technology, especially in this time. And they've been thriving because of it. Marat, hello, how are you? Very good, Karen. Very happy to be here. Thank you. Glad, glad to have you. So bring us up to speed. Obviously, um, we've got a lot of people from different places around the world that are on this call. Tell us about what the market looked like in Turkey. Bring us up to speed on what it looked like before COVID, what, what did kind of the end of 2019 and 2020 look like for you and your world? Let's say in 2019, in the first, let's say eight months of 2019, uh, Turkey's economy was really struggling, very slow, 
and we were doing a lot of things to make it higher. But towards the end of 2019, the last quarter, and 2020, January and February, we were doing unbelievable. Our every month was record-breaking months. Till like March 10th, we were doing like uh, really, 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 really good. Wow. So unlike, uh, unlike 19, you guys really saw the rush and the push coming, uh, coming towards you. So that had to be pretty exciting. Talk to us about that, that March 9th, March 10th date. What did that look like for everyone uh, in Turkey? I mean, uh, in the beginning, uh, everyone was a little bit optimistic. Let's say, oh, we didn't have that many cases in the beginning. But afterwards, uh, the, the key word right now is the exponential. I think it started growing exponential, the number of cases, unfortunately. And uh, we were, I think, shocked for a few hours. But we needed to act fast. We found out that. So as the team, we gathered. And the first thing we did was actually we said, we will make a, we have been in the training side of the business for 20 years. We have a very good uh, team of trainers and a training department. So, and we have been in the online training business in the past like two, three years. So we said we will open everything free to everyone. So we will save our agents. So the most important thing is the most important thing in fire is our agents. So we wanted to make sure we save our agents. So that day, the first case was announced in Turkey. We had all the trainings free, which cost a lot of money normally. So our, all our agents started rushing in to take trainings. And within two days, we started live Zooms. Uh, so wow. from that day on, like almost every day, we had a Zoom training from something i mean we were doing so we even had like yoga psychology uh, all these things, oh wow all these that's yeah, great even that even that we still have a dedicated psychologist for any agent uh, needing something post trauma disorder or something for that so even yoga for kids uh, our broker is writing zufti from turkey right now so we even I see that. have that like dancing classes like at some point, we had every day two, three classes. So we made sure the psychology uh, of our agents was good. That was our point in the beginning. I mean, even though the news was so bad in the media, we needed to uplift our agents. And then we started distributing food for the people in need. We started doing that in the first week. And most of our brokers and agents joins as well. So in that areas, especially for the older people who were living alone, we started distributing food, like me, we were ordering meals for them. So we started doing that, like this was like the second day, third day, fourth day. So really we, in some way we started, we were really active. We, we didn't accept that this was happening really, as most of us are, leaders our agents are very active people everyone started doing uh, something also, so let me, let me let me take a yeah let me let me just let me just hit on a couple of things that you you said there um one you acted fast you didn't pause you you immediately mm -hmm. attacked the the problem and worked with your agents but two you didn't accept the limits of your circumstance and I think that's a powerful thing for people because and I think it's a powerful thing for people to understand that right now, Turkey is not open yet. Is that correct? No, it's not open, especially on the weekends. We are on a like a full, full, full shutdown in the weekdays, people over 65 and people under 20 cannot get out. Uh, but most of the people were not getting out till, let's say, till this week. In the last two, three days, some people started going out. It's starting to open up, but the full open up will be in June, I think. The full, full open up looks like it will be in June. Okay. 
Well, um, you know, our thoughts are, are with you guys, and uh, and I've, I've been uh, amazed to see what you're doing in spite of not truly being open. So let's let's jump right into it. Let's talk about um, technology, and let's talk about Turkey. Um, I know you've got a, a fun video that you can show us either now or we can wait a little bit later, but let's dig in. Let's dig into how you guys not only um, accelerated, and I think that's important, a lot of the things that we're going to be talking about today weren't things that you started because of COVID. They were things that you yeah. accelerated because it gave you an opportunity to focus and seize the opportunity. So let's talk about that. Yeah. What does that look like for you? Yeah, and I mean, from the, the, the whole idea was we wanted to keep all our agents healthy, but we wanted to, to while, while keeping them home, we wanted to, uh, keep them active as well. We wanted to make sure they make money as well from home. That was the main idea and uh, people really didn't get it in the beginning, obviously, because our agents are active. They want to be out. They want to be social, outdoors. Sure. So most of them, like let's say maybe 99% was I think really surprised from the message, right? Stay inside, but make money was not some, something obvious. So we acted uh, with the digital signature. In the in US, in North America, with DocuSign, you are very used to it. But within Turkey, we were not used to it. So we started with the digital signatures. Uh, we agreed with a company so that from home, we were able to do some of the listing agreements, some of the rentals. So that's what we were pushing from the beginning. Also, the main concern of the homeowners were, we please don't get any agents into our home because of the virus. So sure. we found, yeah, and that was the, our biggest challenge, I think, that we were not able to get into the homes for appraisals or for showing the homes. And so we found a solution for that. If you want, I can show the video there. Yeah, I think that would be great. I, uh, I, I know that people will want to see exactly what you did um, to address each one of these places. So uh, go ahead and, and show us that video. Basically, it's a very simple idea. Actually, we have been using drones for many years from outside usually. Basically, we found an indoor drone and then the drone operator or the agent is not getting into the home. That's the whole idea. We are operating it from outside of the home. That was a very simple idea. Uh, and uh, I'll, very simple idea, which didn't, get, which didn't get really accepted in the beginning. But now I'll show you, everyone sees my screen. Yes, we're, we're seeing this That was the that was the idea. I don't know if the video was clear for everyone. Uh, the whole the whole idea is we don't have any human getting into the getting into the home basically. By the way, yeah. that that place is our training center, one of our training centers. So it's funny. I'm watching. Uh, I'm watching the chat light up where people are like, "This is awesome. This is insane. Whatever." Um, and and I would agree. I think um, you know, Fran Day made a comment uh, just a little bit ago saying that they received notice in Pennsylvania that real estate is in lockdown um, in southeast part of PA until uh, June eighth. 
So I think they're going to have to be creative, right? Um, in trying to figure yeah. out how they can showcase properties. And, and this is an amazing way to do it. Not to mention, it makes me want to get a drone to supply it around my house. Um, but talk to us a little bit about the equipment too, because it's not just, I think the equipment's important too. I saw that's a DJI um, drone. Um, what, are, what are some of the things that you're using as far as, talk to us about some of the hardware so that the agents can be thinking about that too. Actually, it's a very simple drone. Uh, this one, we have like much larger drones for outside, but this one, uh, someone is saying we can't fly drones in the DC area, but this drone is able to fly within the home. So you don't really need the license for this home. This is called the DJI's Mavic Mini. If anyone wants to write it, uh, we have it. Uh, DJI Mavic Mini S is the name of the model. So uh, with that, and also you don't need to connect this to the GPS. It could work from your phone's Wi-Fi as well. So it just goes in and it, it's able to maneuver much easily than bigger drones. Also, alternatively, we have a small, uh, what do you call that, like a remote control car. Some homeowners may Yes, say, you oh, said you have a, you have a uh, remote truck, right? Yeah, you have a remote, remote control truck, truck well. right? We, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's really cool as well. I can also give the, yeah, I have the, what do you call that? Yeah, I have the model of that as well, actually. Uh, the other one was Mavic Mini. It's called the Everyday Fly Cam. That's a, it's really easy to find that one. And the other one is DJI RoboMaster S1. I'm writing it down myself um, because I'll tell you what, I never thought in all my years of real estate, I would have so much fun talking about remote control cars and drones. Like, I think that is just amazing, but the application of it and the, 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 uh, the ability yeah. for you to use either. Now talk to us specifically about why um, you are using um, one over the other. What, what determines which one that you use? Why did you guys choose to have two different platforms? Uh, the, the car, let's say, that one is more for like smaller homes or uh, or uh, the, what the, the homeowner might say you could break some things or something like that, doesn't try to, uh, trust the operator of the drone, then we are able to send the small one, but also we can operate the small one from outside as well. Uh, so this was our idea version one, and then we upgraded it, uh, and uh, what we did is, now it's beginning to be used a little bit, not that much. We are able to connect the zoom to these things. So to the drone or to the car, basically we are able to, basically we are, huh, these are the exact uh, figures of the, you, you see it now on the screen, yeah? And, yes. And uh, we are able to basically do live viewings with these. So the actual agent doesn't need to be there. Just the, the robot operator will be there. The agent is outside, able to look at the home. And then maybe in the second viewing, the agent invites the buyer. And with the buyer, they are able to look at the home and everything. So agent doesn't need to go there, actually. So it makes a huge uh, difference. That is incredible. And, and what has the response been? Because the, the, you guys, when you started doing this, I, I think you, uh, you shared with me an interesting story that I think is important for, uh, for agents to understand and actually um, the type of buzz that, ha that occurs with this. What happened when you started to post a video? Tell me, what, tell me the, or, or share with us kind of the phenomenon you saw occur. Yeah. Yeah, in the beginning, when we start talking about it, obviously it was a very unconventional idea for real estate. So really, uh, very few people picked it up. I mean, no one was really interested in this. Uh, but we started really posting the videos and then uh, the, the media, 
but I mean, like the, for Turkey size, the, the largest national TVs picked it up. Also, we have CNN Turkey here. They even picked it up and they started airing this in the national news. So in like four or five channels, we were national, all the, the video I showed you and everything, few other things started airing there. And the next yeah. day you should see people are calling, uh, the homeowners are calling our agents. Like, did you see that? There's a new invention. Uh, could, you, could you sell our home with this and everything? Of course, then our agents started calling the drone operators and us. So, and it started picking up. Like, let's say we were doing like one a week, maybe listing with the drone. Right now, with just the drones we have, we are sharing the office with, the, with that company, the agency, uh, seven, eight listings a day with the drone. Wow. So, I mean, it made a huge, huge difference. Huge difference. We have uh, demand again, from the owners. Right. Well, again, I think the other thing that I find um, stri strategically uh, brilliant that, that we should be taking note of as agents is one, they engaged the media with it and allowed the media to spread the message. That is the best free advertising you can have when you have a good idea. It also can work against you when it's a bad idea, but with a good idea, that's free advertising and that endorsement goes a long way. So make sure you're staying in connection when you're doing things in the community with your local media outlets, and especially if you're innovating in your marketplace, make sure the news knows about it. But the second thing I think that you did, Marat, that is, is brilliant and, and that, that your whole team did is when you, when, you sh when you showed us that last video, the thing that stood out to me right away was not how beautiful the images were, all, all were although they were, but you led out in those first 10 seconds by establishing that you sanitize the drones to create that sense of safety for the consumer. And I think that's really important. I think that, that is something that as agents, sometimes we're very focused on demonstrating the, the product or the end result, but we don't show people the process and why the process, right? And get those questions and objections answered early so that people really appreciate that process. You're right, exactly, exactly, exactly. Very nice. So I wanna, I wanna keep talking because I, I know how this works and, and we're gonna run through time pretty quickly as, as we go. Um, let's look specifically at um, a couple other things that you're doing. And, and, and I'm gonna throw up um, this slide here and I want you to, to talk a little bit to it because I think, again, it's amazing how you are looking at the possibility of using technology in topics that we've talked about for a long time. So I'm gonna share this screen right here. All right, so talk to us about this. What is this? What, what are you talking about when you talk about blockchain and using that during this time? What are some of the concepts that you guys are throwing around or talking about right now? What we are doing is uh, we had to move all our trainings, all our in-class trainings to, to Zoom. So basically we are recruiting a lot of new agents at the moment. Um, last week we recruited 143 new agents and, wow. uh, and we did recorded like three days of recorded trainings and two days of live zoom trainings with them so they they got everything in their initial training everything online this is the first time we are ever doing it but we were not able to give them their paper certificates so we agreed uh, i went to a blockchain training few months ago luckily so we agreed with this uh, blockchain company that works with banks uh, so that we cooperated with them. So with the, with the servers they are using for cryptocurrency and some other things in banking, we were able to get a server from them and hash some uh, blockchain uh, certificates. Uh, we are just beta testing it like as of today. Next week, we hope to finish it and distribute these service uh, certificates on blockchain. So they will be the first digital agents in Turkey and who has a blockchain certificate 
that's it looks like it's pretty secure certificate i don't think it can be erased everything so we are using it just for uh, giving certificates to our agents okay so i want to i want to touch on this because i think that the reason why this is important in the united states i will tell you there are probably people right now um on on the on the uh, the call right now that all of a sudden we just went from the five foot view with talking about drones to blockchain and it feels like star trek and they're going <laughs> what are exactly are you talking about why what, what why does this even matter okay so let me put this in a little bit of context um because because we've been talking about it for years how does blockchain have an impact now remember for 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 all of us we need to remember blockchain as a whole has been around for years as a security validation concept in, in technology, okay? It wasn't, didn't become popular or mainstream or we didn't hear about it until the last three to five years when, it, when people picked up momentum around monetizing it, right? Cryptocurrency is a form of blockchain, but blockchain itself is not just currency. It's a validation process um, and, and almost a, a, a a digital cloning process for validation um, that you can use for security. That's the easiest way to answer it. So in doing this, I think what's, what's cool about this is um, Murad is not talking about currency. He's talking about validation and security and how they're implementing that into the real estate space. So hopefully that helps you guys, because I know it's a lot to unpack. It was a lot for me to unpack. But I think it's, it's interesting to see how in Turkey, these are concepts that they're already working with and kind of trying to see how does that work? Um, and what mechanically could we be implementing to, uh, to impact our associates and our agents? So like I said on our, on our preview, there's stuff they're doing there that we haven't thought of yet. And some stuff that we're doing here that even Marat and I were talking about that he said, really, Talk to me about that too, and how does that work? Okay, all yeah. right. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep us moving here a little bit, Marat. A um, couple different things. I did see that there was a clarification on the DC Metro uh, information on flights and drones. Awesome. This is why I love Agent Voice because none of you are there to just sit there. It's for you to respond and for us to talk back and forth. Um, Anita had a question regarding the the drone company. Um, so, Murad, if you just want to talk through those drone, the, the drone company a couple more times, and then we'll get back into it in just a second. Sure. The drone company is the DJI. DJI. And uh, I can talk about the models. One of them, the car one, again, is the DJI Robomaster. And the other one, uh, the drone itself, is DJI Mavic Mini. And just so you know, D DJI is probably one of the most widely adopted drone companies right now. Um, they make a very reliable drone platform on various levels as far as affordability up to things that are used for media that are um, thousands and thousands of dollars. So DJI, um, look them up and you can look through a bunch of their products and, uh, and their systems. Okay, so talk to me about this remote listing competition that you guys sure. started during this process so let me let me go ahead and share this uh this slide walk us through this con this contest this competition that you did karen could we speak a little bit more about blockchain before we move to this one I just yeah let's one. do it yeah about, let's uh, do it yeah uh, we believe in the future the blockchain uh, could be a, a lot part of our uh, future with uh, especially there is a part of blockchain called smart contracts so smart contracts could really help us especially if we could uh, combine it with like with DocuSign type e-signature with payments so basically when a buyer is just signing after this after the signature is confirmed the payment can go to get through basically safe payment systems uh, could be integrated into e-signatures so smart contracts especially also in rentals it could work basically if you could sign a smart contract maybe that could open the door 
of the apartment and those kind of things. So smart contracts could be in our soon future as well. Well, and not only that, but you can use it as, as you were you were talking as well um, for distribution of funding simultaneously as the contract is is completed. I mean, there's so many applications yeah. that are out there, and I think um, um, within within a lot of places that use title agency or third party to close transactions, there's been that concern about wire fraud and in banking and those things. And I've, I've seen that a lot of those title companies even now nationally um, are working on concepts and with vendors using blockchain for that validation. So I think your, your eyes are, are, are right on target on where we're going and that validation will be essential from a security standpoint um, moving forward. Yeah, yeah, that's great. I can move to your next point now. <laughs> yeah, let's go for it. All right. So talk to me about the, uh, the, the, the remote listing competition and, and what that looked like um, and how you guys deployed that and what the results ended up being. Yeah. Um, in, the first, in the first few days uh, of the COVID, obviously, uh, most of our agents were a little bit shocked and at home and no one was really working. So basically, to just to, to make sure everyone wakes up and to uplift them. We said, again, stay home, but we have a way uh, for you to make business. So let's combine the digital signature, the drones, and now we have a competition among each agent. Uh, the agent who takes the most uh, listing, we did a competition area by area. So to each, uh, like to... I don't know the exact number, maybe around to 30, 40 agents, we started uh, giving, uh, distributing money for the top agent of the day, top agent of the week, who get the most listing. Not on transactions, we were really not expecting any transactions anyway in April, um, but we wanted to increase our number of listings. So this really mm -hmm. helped us. So, and also like, Two days ago, we had a panel of our agents, like about 20 agents, speak at one of our events where 600 agents attended. In that event, of the 20 agents, maybe 12 of them worked from home and was able to get electronic signatures and win the competition, wow. being in the competition, where really we were able to uplift them. Some were really uplifted anyway by themselves. I mean, some didn't really care. They were really working from home. I mean, a remix right. agent, like always lively, but in some of them, we needed to, we gave it a little bit push and they were up. Wow. So you, you talk a lot about keeping people up and keeping people energized yeah. and just, um, knowing you as long as I've known you, you're one of those people, you just, I think, make people smile just by being who you are. Why is that and so important? And how do you get that energy going with your, with your team? And how do you keep yourself up during this time? That's a good one. I think we have a very good team, uh, first of all. Um, we have a very good, like our training team kept us up. They were working like uh, crazy. For example, we just did a, like two weeks ago, we did an awards night, uh, our quarterly awards night. We did it obviously online uh, on Zoom and on YouTube. We had 1,100 people, but, but that night that there was a full lockdown starting. Our team wow. went to the office but they had to leave the office before midnight so that they would not be arrested. So uh, <laughs> they, they, left, they left the office just on time. I think they left the office at 11.30 p.m. to be at home before midnight. So we have really good, uh, uh, dedicated people, I think, in the team. So that makes a, that makes a difference. Also, uh, I think Remax, uh, LLC, Global, Adams Team, Shauna, Chip there. Also, they, they formed a very good communication. Every week, there is a global teleconference within Global and within Europe. 
Michael Pozar's team. So I think also they were able to inspire us from, I mean, we really felt we are a global company. We are in 118 countries, we are in so many. I mean, we passed ideas uh, to each other. So we learned from each other very fast. I think we would learn all these things. It would take us two, three years to learn. We learned these things in two, three weeks. We learned from Remax Italy, and it was really good learning from each other. I think that gave us energy altogether. You know, it's so funny that you say that. And I, and I love hearing this from, from Turkey, where right now it's your evening time. And for many of us, we're just getting ready to have lunch or we're having lunch. And the use of technology to connect us as a company globally, and for agents, don't forget that part of it. Don't forget the fact that you are connected with an organization in 118 countries with over 120 some thousand agents across the world, all innovating people like Marat that, that have that energy you need. And every once in a while, it's important for us to look outside of our small community or outside of even our region and connect with people across the network that we, that we just kind of vibe with. And, and Marat is definitely one of those people and you see it transcend through his region, I was fortunate enough to be on those global calls uh, at 6 a.m. in Denver time, past couple of weeks, and uh, got to spend time with you guys yesterday as well. But I will tell you that the, the power and the energy, going back to one of our first agent voices, one log making a lousy fire, but then all of us put together and what that energy does, um, it really is infectious, and, uh, and I appreciate that uh, about you. Now, you leverage that technology, and you keep people up, but you also train them. So you've, you, you launched a, um, an online seminar, right, to get people going as well, a career seminar. Um, talk to us yeah. about how that kind of pulled everything together for you. Yeah, we did. It, it was also our first time ever, so basically experimenting was our our thing i mean we really didn't expect to be successful we were really trying so we used to do these online seminars i'm not online uh, in class seminars all the time for recruiting now we said you know we have to keep going so let's try this online and we tried it actually in one evening at 9 p.m uh, wow. yeah it's on 15 april and our marketing team, we have a very cool uh, marketing team, Kerem and Fati, and so they were able to push it a lot on Instagram, on Facebook, and in also our brokers were able to push it. So at that night, we were able to get more than 2,000 people watching that how Remax is. It was a really unbelievable event, and we had about like, we showed about, I think, 60, 70 of our brokers' videos promoting their offices. So it was a combination event. Uh, Remax Turkey was doing it with the brokers. Our recruiting team was doing it. So it was a really, really interesting event. And from that, we had that 143 people who get that initial training. From there, wow. we were able to recruit that. From our, in our team, in the head of his team, Remax Turkey, we have Lehman, who, who her only job is to recruit good agents. That's the only thing uh, he does. We are a, wow. it's a very unique position. In the franchise, it's common, but in the regions, normally no, there is no recruiter. We have someone full day who recruits the best agents for Remax. Wow, so the systemization of this, I want to draw a parallel for agents um, and brokers, because some people may be sitting there going, well, as you're recruiting agents and licensing agents and taking them through uh, the, the career seminars, um, why, how does that translate to me as an agent? I don't, I may not have an office or I may not. Well, I think the systemization is the same, right? You, you, you leverage technology to create interest, right? And you brought interest. That interest could be a home buyer seminar. That interest could be uh, uh, a, a selling seminar, that interest could be credit repair, whatever it is, you created that platform that was safe for people to engage. Out of that, you filtered in people that wanted to know more and get engaged uh, with what you're doing. 
you provided them with value and steps. So as an agent, you could go from a credit repair seminar to a, a lending seminar and a buyer's uh, training, right? And then from a buyer's training directly to engagement with that consumer and getting them qualified and moving them into the process of buying a home, right? It's similar concepts. Exactly, exactly. Buyer seminar could be really very similar to this setup, the, the same system, the same system, you are right. During this time, also we have a, in the office, we have a person just for communications. So he was reaching out to all our agents to make sure, how are you guys? How are you doing? To, to get the news. But we mm. have more than 3,300 agents. So we organized him and a few other people to communicate. So basically, every day, 15, 20 people were called up by one person. Maybe five, six people were in the team. So uh, also this translated to our agents. Our agents started calling their seller, past sellers and buyers just to check on them. So basically our communication efforts translated to, the, uh, to our agents as well. They started calling a lot of their buyers and sellers. And as a result of that, for example, in April, we could have had like zero commissions, but it didn't happen. I mean, our agents really proved themselves and we had a pretty good month, even, even in April, and almost in a full shutdown. So it's really, everything is possible. Everything is really possible uh, if everyone starts believing it. Wow, well that is proof positive, right? That is proof positive that from March 9th into April, you guys were still running business, you're still serving the, the community, you're still deploying technology. In fact, you're, you're increasing that. Um, you're, you're being innovative with your strategies to not just change the people that you serve, but to change your industry as a whole. And we're seeing that influence from Remax agents and brokers and regional owners across the globe. That power of, of being an entrepreneur in business for yourself and not by yourself is absolutely amazing. And to hear that you guys had a great April, when you shared that with me in our conversation the other day, I, I wrote it down and put stars next to it. Because <laughs> that, is, that is the truth, right? I mean, the truth is, you, you refuse to accept the framework that you were in yeah. and you look for opportunities to, to, to get out there and, and it's happening. It's happening. Yeah. So tell us what's in store. As we start to wrap up here, tell us what's in store for Turkey um, in the next couple of months, some of the things that you guys are, are doing and, 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 and the way maybe you might be shifting from what you've done over the past couple of months into some other areas that, uh, that as agents, we might be thinking about too. I mean, um... Basically, by June, around June, mid-June, we hope to be uh, fully open. I don't know if it is a full is, a, is the right term, but we plan to be open. And we want to, like, we want to celebrate in some way. I don't know. We can't exaggerate it, obviously, on the streets. But we want to celebrate that COVID is going and we are really opening up. So basically, maybe with each agent, with each office, some kind of a celebration, reopenings or something like that. We are planning on something like that uh, in the beginning. That's our first plan. And we want to really accelerate on the technology. We want to keep these things that we learned in these times the electronic signature, the, the drones, everything. We want to really keep these things. Uh, also, we hope to maybe start advertising in a much bigger way. I mean, we are the new wave. We are an innovative real estate company so that we could really uh, pull, uh, attract the new kind, of, the new generations as well. That's awesome. Well, we're going to be rooting for you and we're going to be watching um, because there's so many things for us to learn and collaborate on. So Murat, I just want to thank you again for joining us. Um, you probably, your, your dinner's probably cold. 
Um, <laughs> you, probably, <laughs> you probably still have more work to do. Um, but we certainly appreciate from the network and from the agents, you just sharing the perspective and the innovation that you guys are doing, but more importantly, the positivity and the leadership that you're providing. Um, you truly are a treasure within this network and we thank you. So um, thanks for joining us. And for everybody that's out there, Agent Voice will be pivoting next uh, week. We are going to have a special guest, uh, Nathan Dart, who's going to be joining us. And, uh, and you know what, I think we're gonna have a little fun. We've known each other for, for some time. He's got some great ideas and some, some great takeaways. And I think we're gonna mix it up a little bit, right? Um, because he's a good one to do that with uh, and, and talk about what the future of real estate looks like and, uh, and some, some key ways that we can execute and accelerate coming out of this returning to a new norm. So on, uh, on behalf of everybody uh, that's part of this, um, DJ, Tommy May, who's back behind the ones and twos, making sure that all of our engineering goes well. And for Marat, thanks for tuning in to the Agent Voice, and we'll see you next week.